So here we go, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Kings of Anglia Fan Social. And it's been a week with no town game, but what a Wild League One campaign it's been. Barnsley dropping points. Sheffield Wednesday beaten by Forest Green. Beaten? I know they drew. We got to chat on them. They were getting beaten 2 0, but it is what it is. Uh, but I've got you another fan social. We are proudly sponsored, of course, by Manscaped and Ginger Pickle uh, for all your marketing needs. I'm joined this week by Kieran making his debut on the fan social. And Tom, who is fresh off a exclusive chat with Neil Warnock. We'll get to more of that later on. But Kieran, welcome to the show. Uh, town have been you, taking man. the back seat the last week um, with no game. But uh, how's things? Yeah, good. Um, thanks for having me on. It's great to be here. Yeah, it's been a been a bit of a quiet week for Tang fans, but for myself being well, it's been quite a busy weekend with internationals. Um, especially with Burns and Broadhead being in the sides, being a bit of added interest for, for us as Ipswich fans. A good start of the campaign for Wales, a point away to Croatia, scored by uh, Mr Broadhead on his debut. A fantastic moment for him and for Welsh fans. I've got quite a good mate who does Wales home and away, and he said it was just an incredible moment for everybody in that stadium when that goal went in. But yeah, it's been a quite a crazy week in League One to reflect on. I look forward to get our teeth into that in a minute. Yeah. Yes, definitely, my friend. And yeah, congratulations to Nathan Broadhead. Debut goal, another cap. Wes Burns, of course, got himself another cap as well. So um, well done, Wales. Well done. Uh, Tom, welcome back to the show. Um, you're fresh off a exclusive yeah. chat with Neil Warnock. How was that? And how's yeah. things? Yeah, things are things are very good. Thank you. Yeah, the chat with, uh, with Neil was sort of surreal. I hadn't done anything like that since I'd done sports journalism at university. So... Um, it was nice, but um, no, he's a lovely guy. I sort of knew he would be um, from previous, you know, antics that he's had and meme abilities. Um, but no, it was a lovely chat, and he told me way more than I was sort of expecting to get out of him, which was a nice little surprise as well. Yeah, it was, it was a great read, um, and we're gonna we've got a nice little segment on that um, later on the podcast, and we'll get into that in a bit. But um, boys, we've got to mention the League One campaign because it's. It's a four-horse race now, isn't it, for for top two? Um, league title is wide open now with Sheffield Wednesday dropping points um, and losing, of course, against Forest Green on the weekend. Kieran, what's your thoughts on that? I think we went into this weekend knowing Town had no game, but um, teams around us drop points. Well, what, what a week. Did anyone see this coming? I don't think anyone did, did we? When we all sat here and we looked at the, the games that the respective teams had, that we thought, well, this is the start of like Sheffield Wednesdays and Plymouth's fairly simple running. I know Plymouth didn't play, um, but you know, you look on the on paper, the, the teams that Sheffield Wednesday specifically had to play in that time was was uh, Barnsley, Forest Green, and Cheltenham. And you think, well, they're going to get at least six, seven points out of that. But no, they what they they've dropped two. They've now two points out of their last fifteen, and whereas we've gone fifteen of those same fifteen, so. It's a pull them right back in the race, isn't it? We are now, what, five points off the top with a game in hand and completely fantastic position to be in. Um, I think we're in the best position out of the top four, having not played a game, because especially then Barnsley as well, who, okay, despite beat Sheffield Wednesday in one of their games in hand to gain three points back on us, went and lost, again the for- went, lost their, their game in hand on us. And so we see three points clear of them. Of it having been pulled right back in the race by not really doing anything, just sitting back eating popcorn and uh, playing a, a training game at Spurs. I think it's fantastic, isn't it? Um, and I can see maybe Sheffield Wednesday have lost their momentum now. Um, they're going to they're going to be in a bit of a wobble. I think it was definitely still right to not play Barnsley on the weekend. Have that game called off? You could argue, well, they, they've now lost to. Uh, to Exeter, but I think playing them on Saturday would have been a different kettle of fish right after they played and beaten, convincingly beaten Sheffield Wednesday. I think we still would have probably, it was, it's going to be a tough game to go there anyway, but would have been even tougher because they'd have been on a very much on a high. Okay, I know we are, but you know, there's been plenty on social media and on both sides of it should have played them, shouldn't have played them. And especially after Tuesday night, Lots of people saying, we de- see, this is why we should have played them. But I still don't think it would have been the right decision. Um, I say it's overall, it's a very good week, 10 days for us, isn't it? Look at where we are now. I mean, it's 
this this final nine games meets it's, it's not quite in our hands yet but it's not far off being and I think momentum wise we're going the right way and Plymouth and Sheffield Wednesday pretty aren't and that's all that matters you know we looked at it a couple of weeks ago everyone said well after we they came to us we, that we played we played Sheffield Wednesday we'd seen the league champions I'm not convinced anymore uh, there's a lot of twists and turns in this and I think there's no reason why we can't now go on and win the league. It's it's gonna be tough. No, it's gonna be tough. But if we keep doing what we're doing and the teams around us keep doing what they've been doing, okay, they've got they're gonna regroup, they're gonna go again. But yeah, I, I think we're in a real, real shot now at definitely top two, if not top completely, win the whole thing. I'm liking it, Kieran. I'm liking it. Um and yeah, town haven't kicked the ball, but Tom, a very good position we're in at the moment. Uh we didn't see this coming. Um, I didn't see us, you know, I didn't see Sheffield Wednesday dropping points against Forest Green. No chance. They're, they're dead and buried, really. But th- big dunk, doing us a favour. Thoughts on, on the on the week? That's gone. I mean, I think if you'd have said to every single Ipswich fan that 10 days without us kicking a ball, um, we'd still be only four points off automatics, five points off top. Game in hand and a plus 41 goal difference, which is far superior to anyone else in the league, let alone around us. Um, you know, we'd have snapped your hand off. Um, so it's it a bit gutting that Cheltenham went 2 0 up last night and, you know, just couldn't hold on. But they still did us a massive favour by, you know, getting those two goals. So I think what I was expecting to happen with Plymouth, uh, which is, you know, for them to go on a bit of a, you know, lull um it hadn't happened until you know hopefully they're going through a little bit of one now um otherwise if sheffield wednesday experience it now then um we'll happily take their spot you know i, I just want to avoid the playoffs yeah you know, that's that's all i all i want to do just and avoid the playoffs because they'll just be awful and you know until I wouldn't even say this season. I'd say maybe half of this season. We've been absolutely shocking in League One against top six teams. Um, absolutely rubbish. This year, we've sort of held our own against a lot of them. Um, but I'm afraid that in the playoffs, we're just going to you know, crumble or you know, it's just not going to work out. So I want us to get, to get automatics. And I, I, I think we will. You know, I think everyone's saying that we've got a tough run-in, which we do. But we're going into the run-in with seven clean sheets on the bounce six wins on the bounce which we haven't done for however many years so we've got nathan broadhead and burns will come back on a high from their you know welsh um a couple of weeks away so i think and we've got the squad depth to deal with the eight games in april uh easily i think so i'm hopeful i'm really really hopeful that i think you know chapel wednesday plymouth barnsley they'll do their own thing hopefully a couple of slip-ups We'll do what we have been doing. Um, and, yeah, I, I think we'll get there. OK, then. Well, I want to jump right into it. And we were going to talk about the Neil Warnock interview, Tom. But let's jump quickly, actually, into the sort of points prediction chat. Um, final final nine games to go. 27 points up for grabs. Um, we've done a great video early in the week. We've got old Peachy and Bono um, predicting all the games. But, Kieran, 27 points, my friend. How many do you reckon Town will get? And is that enough to win the title? Is that enough to get in top two? Or is it playoffs for town? What's your thoughts? Well, I went through this and did it a couple of times. And I tried, the first time I came up with a quite optimistic point total. And I looked at the league and went, Christ, that would have us on however many. So I thought that's a little bit, even for me, it's a bit reaching. Um, I've got us down, so my initial predictions are 23 from the last 27, which means we go unbeaten and we end up with 98 points. And if that's not enough to go up automatically, even win the league, I'd be very surprised. But then I had another think, and I thought I took a breath, and I'm like, actually, is that really reasonable? Because at the moment, I can't see where the next defeat is going to. We're going to, where we're going to concede a goal, let alone lose a game. But we do have a tough run in. We've got teams that are going to be coming at us with stuff of their own to play for. So I, I think a conservative, fairly reasonable estimate is 20 points from the next 27. Get the next 27, um, and I've got us in that to win six, draw two, lose one. Win all of our home remaining home games, which I think is fairly reasonable, and then to I've got what well, other protection is to draw at Cheltenham because I think that's going to be a tough place to go as they've proved against Sheffield Wednesday, 
uh, draw at Barnsley and then lose at Peterborough, which I think is, of all the games, I think we I can see us losing. I think it's Peterborough's be that one where it's, it's that sort of, sort of team, sort of place. It's not going to go our way on the day. But yeah, and then to win everything else, um, which gives us 20, 95 points. And that would see us fairly, com- hope, touch wood, fairly comfortably in second place, if not to- if not first. Um, but I haven't then done what the other teams have got to predict. But I would hope 95 points sees us into the automatics. But it's going to be one of those seasons where that might not be enough. And it's going to be a freak season. As I, I, I was listening to the, as I listened to this week's this week's pod, and I, it, it, the point was raised there by um, Hutchie and Stuart that um, all top four could end up at ninety plus points, which would be the first time it's happened ever. Um, so, you know, does ninety five see us? You would think so. In any other season, ninety five would win you the league, but I don't think ninety five potentially wins the league. But I think, yeah, twenty points. From the last twenty-seven remaining is a, a fairly reasonable estimate of where I think this, the t- this, the side is at the moment, um, and the teams around us that we're going to have to play are. So, yeah, that's what I think. Oh, I, know, I like that. I like that. And yeah, it's it's bonkers to think someone's going to miss out in the top two with possibly ninety points, ninety one, ninety two points. It's, it's just incredible. And if we miss out and we got ninety five points because teams got ninety eight or hundred, it's just like League One is crazy, Tom. Your thoughts then, mate? We've got some big games coming up in this run-in, but um, what's your predictions in terms of 27 points up for grabs? Yeah, I went very similar with Kieran, actually. However, I went for 22 points, uh, which would mean that we win all of our uh, remaining games except for drawing against Barnsley. And I do think we will lose to uh, Peterborough. I can see them because they've obviously got playoffs in, you know, in reach now um they're doing well at the moment i can fully see them you know wanting it way more than anyone else uh sort of in the league to get in those playoff spots um i'm not worried i don't think i'm worried <laughs> famous last words don't think i'm worried about derby um bless them they, they just seem to be one of the most inconsistent teams they just you know win a couple of games and then all of a sudden they end up losing to some team in the relegation zone uh, and then go for a couple of losing games um so I, I, i'm not really worried about them wickham again not really worried and then everyone else other than barnsley and peterborough i, I can sort of see us you know hopefully comfortably beating um i mean that would leave us on 97 points and as kieran said i would be surprised if that is not enough to at least get the second spot um yeah i obviously 97 points would win you the league um you know in any any other season but this is just ridiculous you've got four brilliant teams all right at the top of the table um and then not really that far behind really you've got a few more teams that you can argue are some of the best in in league one as well um but no 97 points i think has to win you the league um, but again, that's you know, depends on what Peter and uh, not Peter Plymouth and uh, Sheffield Wednesday do. So, yeah, well, yeah, we're talking about this when we, we yeah, you know, we just got to rely on the other teams dropping points and stuff like that. But it's always good fun to do predictions and uh, yeah, just enjoy it. Um, because Kieran and Tom, it's the first time since we've been in League One, we've actually had a run in of any sorts like to actually think we're doing a podcast right now saying nine games to go and we're in we're in the mix for the playoffs top two league one title ah oh, it's exciting yeah. and i can't wait for it um well tom gonna keep keep with you and talk about neil warnock yeah. because uh of course he's now the huddersfield town manager but um he had a chat with you yeah. about he's um he's got a show coming up in at, in, at the region um let us know about that he chat does. and the show plug it for him as well yeah um i'm sure he'd love that he's um He's performing his show at the Ipswich region. Um, Are You With Me is the name of it. He's basically um, talking about his memories, his many funny moments on the sidelines, uh, you know, thoughts on Ipswich Town, um, some more stories that he didn't tell me because he specifically said, I'm going to save this for the show so people have to come along. Um, so, yeah, lots of lots of interesting stories of his 
you know, 2006 Sheffield United team against Ipswich Town is 2016 Cardiff City brawl with Sol Bamba, um, which was a sight to behold. Um, and a sight to behold him reenact it without the Sol Bamba on, on screen the other day when I spoke to him. Um, so now he's coming to Ipswich for that, but it was a great, great opportunity to ask him, you know, a little bit more about his actual relationship with Ipswich because I understand, I, well, I know that he's been a little bit of the pantomime villain uh, in the past at Portman Road. And, um, you know, he, he admits he has no idea where the nickname Colin came from. He's He was really confused at that and he still is. Uh, he just sat there going, I don't know where that came from. But, um, yeah, no, great guy. And, yeah, I'm sure if you do want to go and get tickets, there will there is some still available and it will be a fantastic evening, I'm sure. Yeah, definitely. And uh, yeah, check out Tom's piece on the Sanning Daily Times website. Um, and yeah, good, good, good insight on on Neil Warnock. And uh, yeah, he literally came town manager. And Kieran, that sort of links up with um, a question for the podcast this week. And it's sort of asking you boys and anyone listening, get involved in the comments, of course. Uh, which past manager would you like to be in town boss? Like someone in the away dugout and gone, oh, I wish that man was our manager. Kieran, you, I'm sure you've watched town, been a town supporter for 20 years. I hope you haven't put too much years on you. But um, <laughs> has there been a, a manager in the dugout where you've gone, oh, I wish he was our town boss. Of course, right now we've got Kieran McKenna, so we're happy. But in the years of sporting town, any sort of managers you think, yeah, him? Well, I never saw him in the away dugout because we never played them when, uh, since I've been a fan, just because not drawing the cup. And I, I started supporting it since the year the first year we were back in Division One after coming down from the Premier League um, was Sir Alex Ferguson because that's the first name that springs to mind. Where, which former manager do you? Because he's greatest of all time, isn't he? Um, but I think that's a cop out, really cop out, easy answer. So then I went back to my roots and I thought, who and I thought Gary Speed into Chris Coleman in the same way that they went with Wales because I I feel thinking back to that sort of time frame of Ipswich Town at that time, I think in the same way that they came in, that Speed and then Coleman came in and changed the culture of Wales and took them on into the the, the, the team they became, get into the Euros in 2016, finally, you know, achieving what they would have done, is something similar to the, to the transitional period. Ipswich found themselves in, in that sort of time, back in the, the, the late 2000s, early 2010s. So yeah, I, I, that's just what I was thinking. I, I wasn't really sure what you meant by the question. I ended up coming. What what former Ipswich manager would I like now as as well? I'll, but I'll, we'll leave that because it's off topic. But um, yeah, so that's what I've come up with is Alex Ferguson, obviously, or indeed uh, Chris Coleman. Scary speed, Chris Coleman. I think would have been would have been right for Ipswich at that time. I think they, they, the trajectory that they took Wales on was about the same sort of thing that Ipswich were finding themselves in in the time that we went through McCarth, uh, uh, Magilton. Keane, McCarthy, Jewel, Lambert, Cook, you know, that t- that I think a solidified Matt Coleman type would have done us a lot, a lot better and taken us to our dreamland, which would have been Premier League, rather yeah. than the drudgery of League One that we found ourselves in for the last few years. Yeah, thanks to the pools out there, all the pools. Oh, yeah, we won't get into that. We, Tom, we don't want any more pools, do we? I'm pleased we've got a Kieran now and, you know, I've got another with Kieran on the podcast, which is great. Um, but Tom, What's your what's your answer to this? Any any manager that's been in the way dug out and went, oh, I wish who was your manager? I've got one name, and I'll bring that up in a second. But I'll let you let you share yours. Well, I've got a couple. Uh, when he first told me that Roy Keane got the job over him, I immediately said to Neil Warnock, "You would have been a hundred thousand times better than what we did have at the time." And I, yeah, he would have been. He made sure that he, it wasn't him that said that, but. Um, yeah, you know, he would have at that time, what, 2009, I think it was, when Marcus Evans had money. Um, we were, you know, not a bad team at the time. He was a good manager. I think we'd have we'd have got back to the Premier League with him. Um, I genuinely do. So I, that one was um I'd like Neil Warnock to have been Ipswich manager at some point. And the other one is Frank Lampard. In that season that we got relegated. I think he'd have been, he, well, he definitely would have kept us up, but look at what he did with Derby in his first season as a manager. He, you know, took them to the playoffs. He's, I don't think he's the best manager in the world. However, he did have something that, you know, 
Paul Hurst certainly didn't have, which is sway. You know, he could bring players to the club that would actually make a difference. Paul Hurst did not have that at all. And then obviously we have Paul Lambert, who's just a turn in. Um, so, you know, I think Frank Lampard at that time would have been a brilliant. I think he would have been a brilliant manager for us. And we'd have actually, you know, potentially had something to cheer about that season rather than finishing last. And the only highlight being a win against Leeds United on the last day. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah, when Lampard's name got sort of chucked out there, of course, he had an interview with, with Town, but um, yeah, it just never happened. And so, some fans were probably 50 50 on it. It's like, really, he's not really had it much experience, but he's gone on to, you know, manage Chelsea. Of course, he's, you know, been sacked since then, been at Everton and stuff. But um, yeah, not a bad name to chuck out there. My name is um, we've never actually had a foreign manager in charge of Town. We've had players who, you know, a Scottishman, you know, George Burley with Irish, of course, now Jim Chilton and Kieran McKenna. Um, We've had Roy Keane, of course, Irish as well. You mentioned that. Um, but, yeah, we've never had any foreign managers, have we? Um, not that I know of. Just double-checking. No, we haven't. Um, but my name is Nuno Espirito Santo. Um, I think I said that right. Probably been actually probably not been wise, actually, having him as manager because I was struggling to say that every week. But um, the former <laughs> Wolves manager, um, and, of course, Tottenham manager as well. Of course, didn't have that long at, at Tottenham. But um, I loved his Wolves team. Of course, he got them promoted. And I had an experience of um, being in a press conference when he was at Portman Road once. And I just loved just how he came about. Normally, the managers, they sit on top of the... I'm sure you've maybe been in the press room, Tom, maybe. And they sit, you know, on this... this I don't know. I don't know what you call it. Um, <laughs> yeah, 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 pivot thing. Yeah. And they they chat. Um, but he decided to not sit up there. He actually sat down and just went, can anyone come around me? And just basically sat down on our level, basically. Um, and I just loved that about him. And it was, it was a great just scene, just all the journalists just around him, just him just sitting eye level to them. And just from that, I always remember that. And um, I thought he was a good manager, had some good teams. And I thought at Spurs, didn't get a chance, did he? And yeah, we never had a foreign manager. We were linked once with Morris Stein, a Dutch manager back in the day. I think that was before, was it Hurst getting appointed? I think he his name got randomly chucked out there. And that was just a running joke. Stein, you know, we never had a foreign manager, Dutch connection and stuff. Um, but yeah, Nuno Espirito Santo uh, would be my choice, um, just as a little, yeah, dark horse. Kieran? Yeah, you see, when you said that, right, and I thought foreign managers, it, it triggered something in my mind, and I thought to, um, a manager potentially, right? I would have liked to see Roberto Martinez. Because mm -hmm. what he did with Swansea and the way he took them, I think he, would, again, would have done something good, similar to us, and I th think a uh, foreign manager. Um and funnily enough, I still remember him playing in that game against Chester when we when John Walters was running around everywhere. He was that sort of stamp, put your foot on the ball midfielder and then let everyone run around in them to, to Walters, which obviously led to us signing him. Um, you know, I think Martinez would have been, well, our first foreign manager, would have been a very good choice. I think he would have been the, would have done something because well, he managed to get out of Swansea and get them in the Premier League. And we were a much better setup than they were at the time. So yeah. I think, yeah, he, yeah. I think he would have yeah, been a, a pretty decent choice. Yeah. And um, there's also, a, you know, Gus Poyet has always been linked or has always been chatted by town fans because of Mauricio Tarico has been his assistant. And that was always that chat of like, oh, let's get Gus in and he can bring in Tarico. Um, but yeah, never happened. But yeah, never, never option there, boys. Um, well, there we go. I uh, get involved in the comments, as I said. Uh, what some of former or just manager in general who's been in the way dug out and gone, oh, I wish he was our manager. I'm sure definitely when we had Paul Hurst, Paul Lambert. Paul Cook to an extent. Paul Jewell, Roy Keane. I was like, oh, I wish we didn't have him, but we wish we had them. Um, but yeah, it's a long conversation. That um, Up next is the strike. Um, just a nice little break here before we get into the nuts and bolts of Derby slash the squad in general. Um, four questions plus a tiebreaker, as always. Tom and Kieran going head to head. And of course, play at home as ever. Um, this week is linked to Derby. All things Derby, as we're playing Derby this weekend, obviously. Um, first question. Let me just get my answers up. Just make sure I haven't put the answers on the link. Thankfully, I haven't. So I haven't given away the answer straight away to Kieran or Tom. Um, so, yes. Um, first question is on Richard Keogh. Um, of course, a former Derby player, a current player at town. Hasn't played for a while, of course. But um, he's made over 721 appearances um, in his career to date. And how many goals has he scored in them games? Um, fun fact... 
most of his goals has been for Derby. Uh, hasn't scored for Town, of course, but um, just thought this is a nice little question. Of course, if you get it bang on, boys, double the points. Um, a defender scored a few from the set pieces. Um, and yeah, as I said, scored most of his goals. I think half of his goals for Derby and then the rest for his other clubs. Um, and I can't remember the other clubs. So uh, I think one was his Reese Blackpool, of course, recently. Um, but yeah. 721 games. What do you reckon then, boys? It's a tricky one, really, because, yeah. If it was a forward, you think, ah, oh, yeah, a couple of goals. But defender, set-piece man, yeah. he's a big lad, Richard. But, yeah, Kieran Son, what do you reckon? I've got well, my answer. I've gone for 20. Yeah, I've, got, I've got my answer, yeah. Let's go ahead. I got twenty-four. Is what I gone for? Twenty-four. Okay. Yeah, I got. I got twenty-five. <laughs> wow. Oh <laughs> my god. Someone's. I was going to go with twenty-five myself until you said he done half of his goal. I thought it's got to be an even number. <laughs> so I dropped it to twenty-four. <laughs> I just. I can't believe that both of you are so close, and one of you's got it bang on. Um, it's twenty-five. Tom, it's 25. Oh. So, Kieran, unbelievable. Effort, I, I just can't believe you both were play. so close. Uh, of course, Tom is close, but like you also were close. Yes. Yeah. That is incredible. 25 and 721 games. Tom, two points to you. Um, Tom, do you reckon, should we give Kieran a point because he was close as well? Yeah, yeah Kieran. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I appreciate the pity point. <laughs> That's not pity. I mean, if you said, I don't know, if you said twenty or maybe thirty or thirty-five, I would have got all. Oh. But as you yeah. twenty-four, one off, you get a point. But Tom has taken. Uh, I'll take that. Take point. Yeah. I like it. Question two: um, Last time we won at Pride Park was back in November 2017. Callum Connolly scored the only goal in that game. But who set him up? Was it Martin Wycorn, Burson Selina, or Jonas Knudsen? Uh, I think it was a header. I can remember. Um, it was an early goal. I think it was like the fifth minute or something like that. We won the game 1-0. Um, of course, that was the, the end of the Mick McCarthy era. I think we have been to Pride Park since, but we lost um, for this game. It's the last time we won there. Um, but yeah, Waghorn, Selena or Nusson. What do you reckon then, boys? Is Kieran going to clinch one back here or is Tom going to extend his lead? I've got my answer. Go. Just go for it. Just shout out. Don't worry. Don't, uh, don't be polite, uh, boys. Just shout out. Oh, uh, Jonas Nudsen. Okay. I went Selena. You're both wrong. It's Martin Moore. Moore uh, Martin Wegg. <laughs> okay. um, so from the first question, get absolutely bang on to uh, <laughs> both getting it wrong. Um, there we go. That's where this goes down here on the strike. Um, but we shall see. Um, question three is on Connor Hurahan, um, of course, currently at Derby, midfielder. Um, I think he's he's doing pretty well for them. He's scored a lot of goals. Um, and he was at town um, under Roy Keane, but never played a game. But he did have a squad number. But what was that squad number? Was it 29, 31 or 34? Of course, the squad numbers. Um, people out there will know this probably if they have the, if they got the squad numbers at the back of their Back of their hand, where they go, yeah, I know every squad number in past, present, and future players. But Connor Hurahan never played for town, but he was probably on the bench a few times and did have a squad number. So, um, what do you reckon? Take it away. I went 29 because I originally thought 25, and that's the closest number to it. Fair play. I went for 30. I went for 31. And the reason I, I went, I, I took a guess. I'm pretty sure Lewis Price was still playing for us at that point, which is even his number is 34. So I, uh, uh, you're I both, 31. You're both wrong. You're both wrong. It's 34. It is 34. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Lewis Price left by then. Yeah, you would have yeah, gone then by then. Yeah. Um, but yeah, 34 was his squad number. Uh, I'm going to quickly get up the other squad numbers mentioned in there. Um, so I, I wanted to. Basically, have squad numbers that we've been used. Um, 29 was Jack Ainsley, if you remember him. Um, had a, uh, He's currently playing in non-league in Suffolk. And then David Cowley, who um, was an Irishman, um, never played a senior game. But, um, but there we go. 
There was a squad numbers, but Connor Hurahan, number 34. So, uh, incorrect answers again, but going into the, the final question, um, Kieran needs to get it right, right to go to a tiebreaker. Tom just needs to get it right to cement himself in this. And it's on David McGordrick. Of course it is. Um, the former town striker. Scored 18 goals this year for Derby. Um, I don't know if he'll be playing. I think he will. I think he started against Peterborough this week, uh, last weekend. So, he, will, he could be featuring. Uh, but, boys... What is his middle name? We all want to know. David McGordrick's middle name. Anthony James or Robert? David Anthony McGordrick. David James McGordrick or David Robert McGordrick. Did see. What could have been, hey? What could have been? You know, just injuries and stuff like that. Um, well, Kieran, uh, Kieran, you need to get this right, my friend. You have got hope Tom gets it wrong, so we take it to a tiebreaker. But as you know, we'll probably do a gamble anyway. We'll use the tiebreaker question, but to take it to a tiebreaker, what's your answer? Well, this is the first name before the options came up that came to my mind. So when it came up, I had to go with it. I'm for Robert. Okay. Tom, you got to Robert as well? Went Robert. Yeah. Are you both wrong? It's uh, James. So, um, <laughs> Tom, you have one. Um but this has not been a good uh, run of questions um, because, yeah, the last three questions we've got it, both got it wrong. Uh, we started very high, very high with the first question. And, um, yeah. yeah, I think we're just going to go to a tiebreaker anyway. I'm not even going to ask you, Tom. You have one overall, but we're going to go to a tiebreaker um, because you're going to gamble anyway. Um, and, but Kieran has to get it bang on. And if he... Or, no, I don't know if you... It's tricky to get it bang on because this question is on the capacity of Pride Park. So I don't really know how we should make a rule here because if you, it's tricky to get it bang on, but I'm, we, we're going to play that game anyway. You got to get it bang on, Kieran, to win. Um, and Tom, if you get closer, you get the point. But um, but yeah, capacity of Pride Park tricky is a tricky one. I'm going to quickly get the answer up because I actually thought I had it on me, but I don't. No googling, no googling. <laughs> no, I'm having Google. Um, I've, I've I've got a number in my head, all right, and it's probably an estimate. But this is a thing I remember from when I was very young. When I for, I was a couple of years into supporting Ipswich, my dad, me and my dad did every game home and away, and I was obsessed with capacities of stadiums. Ooh. And so I went into the Derby Pride, the, the shop at Pride Park, to get my little mini kit or um, thing I used to get to sh- to say I beat which grounds I've been to. And I asked behind the counter, and the number they gave me at that time. And this would have been the best part of 20 years ago. So it probably has changed since then. It's 31,300. And that's a number that stuck with me for the best part of 20 years. So that's what I'm going to go with. And it's probably wrong. But uh, 31,300. Okay. Well, um, Tom, I'm actually going to have an extra question on this in a minute. um, If Kieran does get closest. Because I think getting it bang on is a bit unfair. But if you get closer, then you win overall. But... If Kieran's closer, then we'll take the tiebreaker because I have been able to find a quick tiebreaker quickly. Um, second tiebreaker, 2.0. But Tom, what's your answer? Well, I couldn't remember whether I'm, I also do quite like capacities. I'm weird. Um, and I couldn't remember whether it was 31,000 or 33,000 and then just a load of random numbers at the end. So I went for 33,462. Ooh. The correct answer is 33,597. So Tom is the closest by only a few. Another good effort there, Tom. Um, you've won then, my friend. We don't need to use tiebreaker 2.0. Um, speech, my friend, a good effort, um, despite the little little run of incorrect answers from both of you. But um, you've won. Well done. Yeah, I mean, it started well, absolutely atrocious in the middle, and then it Went a little bit better at the end. Yeah. But, yeah. I like it. Much like many Ipswich Town seasons, to be fair. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Just by, like, League One campaigns, we start, right? And then, there we go, back down. Uh, But good effort, Kieran. Good effort. I like that. It was a good strike. Uh, A mixture of emotions there. Roller coaster emotions because, uh, yeah, started unbelievably and then we're in, yeah. There you go. Another strike in the back. Um, Hope everyone at home enjoyed that. So let us know how you got on. Um, Now then. Let's get right into Derby preview and also take a look at the squad as a whole because this is probably the best town squad we've had in League One for a very long time and some players are going to miss out on the, the 18 in general. 
Um, we pretty much know the full 11 now, don't we? I think there's only maybe one or two question marks up front, maybe out wide. Um, and the question really, Stu did a very good piece on the website this week and was sort of talking about the squad players who will make a big impact in the final nine games. And I've, all the t- players, I think, will have their say this this in the final nine games. But Kieran, who, who's the one player you think will make the biggest impact? Well, I, I had t- when I when I wrote this down, when I went through the article, I read the article, I wrote two now and you asked for one. Um, and I'm going to base this on who I'll... Do two if you want. I'll just say yeah. one just so to I, make it shorter, but just go for two. Yeah. Uh, so my, I, I, I'm split between Eduardo and Jackson. And uh, Carl Edwards, he, he's, when he comes on, he's always fantastic. Um, he's got that, what I feel is that X factor of a player. That's something special, a little bit of quality that not many people have that always seems to just excite people and... He's just a great personality, isn't he? Um, and he, yeah, he always does something. When he, I don't see there are many games I've seen him play where he hasn't really done something in some way. Um, he scored a goal in his last game, but then so did Jackson. Um, I, I think for me, it's going to be Caden Jackson of, of all the squad players have the biggest impact. And I'm going to base that purely on he's who I think will play the most minutes between out of those players between now and then, the end of the year. Um, He's scored in his last goal. He's very, he's got a very high work rate. He's quick. He's direct. He's a very more than able replacement for Burns out wide. Um, he doesn't have bad games when you play him in the right place. All the the less than fantastic performances we've seen of him have been when McKenna's made it, put him as that lone striker, which really doesn't suit him at all. But yeah, out wide on the right, out wide on the left, potentially. Um, he, he's going to make a big impact. He's a great player. Um, and I think he's going to play the most amount of football out of the out of the squad players, as it were. He might even get a couple of starts between now and then, which I don't think many of them, the rest of the squad players, will. Um, and I think he's going to have a fantastic impact. He's always he's always something. Again, he's one of those players that makes things happen. Um, and he's always in the gets himself in good positions and puts other play, players in good positions. And yeah, I think that's it's going to be for me. It's going to be Caden Jackson going to have a fantastic impact for us between now and the end of the year. Yeah, I think um, he's one of Kieran McKenna's success stories in in terms of him coming in to the club and sort of bringing Kane and Jackson, you know, up in his game. I know he's still very 50-50 with the town fans, but um, a player that has improved under McKenna. Uh, Tom, which player for you is, um, you agree with Kieran there, but any other players you want to chuck into the mix? Well, I, I wrote down Kane Jackson as well, because uh, pretty much the entire uh, exact same reasons, you know, play the most. He will start a few because he's got that, you know, stamina over, you know, burn. Well, a lot of them won't be able to play eight games, eight full 90 minutes in uh, the space of four weeks. Um, but Jackson, when he does come on, he 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 looks like a completely different player from what he has done since he joined the club. Um, you know, out on the wing, which I always thought he was a winger. No, I, every time he played up top, I was a bit like, why is this guy not out on the wing? Because he's he's got the pace. His crosses is pretty good. Um, his shooting is mm, less so, but, you know, as a winger, you're mainly there to get assists, um, which is what he does quite well. Um, and he, he also tracks back really well, I think. He, he's really good at tracking back when, you know, there's a player out of position. You know, Harry Clark has gone forward. You know, he's good at getting back um, and helping out the defence. So I do think it will be Jackson that will have the biggest impact as well. Um, but I can see Harness play having a role to play as well. I, I'm not his biggest fan, Harness, uh, because his first touch is not brilliant and his passing a lot of the time is all over the shop. Um, but he knows where the goal is. Uh, he, you know, he can score quite a few and he can occasionally assist them as well. So I think he will, he will be important as well. No, good, good. I think, yeah, Harness, once again, he's very 50 50. I think, you know, he's had a bit of an inconsistency recently. He had a great start to his town career, but he hasn't scored for a while. But hopefully, he can, you know, we've got a lot of players who can score, kind of Chaplin and co. But um, I think that's, we've got to rely on some other players getting some goals as well. But um, yeah, Kane Jackson, impact man. Um, well, Kieran, Tom, Derby County, Pride Park, League One. Uh, they're sixth in the table, Kieran. How are you feeling going into this game? Your thoughts, your predictions, take it away. Um, 
headline prediction, I've got an Ipswich 2-0 win. Um, so that before I get into it, that's, I, that's, a t- that's the first thing I wrote down when I wrote, made a note for this earlier. Because um, at the moment, I can't see us conceding. Uh, Derby have won one, in their la- one of their last five. They lost their last two in a row. Um, that's their majorly inconsistent side. We've beaten them already this year. Uh, it was a very tense game um, under the lights of Portland Road back in October. Um Town are going to come, come into this quite well rested. They're going to be feeling sharp. Um, Burns and Broadhead are going to come back on quite a high with a lot of confidence um, from their exploits with Wales over the weekend in the last sort of week or so, week and a half. Um, uh, Derby aren't in great form. So they, they've lost two in a row. They've, they've, they've won one of their last five. We've won our, one of our all of our last six. Um, probably an unchanged 11 is going to be good. Rip switch consistency. Okay, are you looking at thinking someone like Broadhead who's played an hour of football for Wales in the last seven days? It's not a huge amount, really. Um, and he's, I want to see him start certainly the bigger games that we've got coming up. Or I, I can't see him starting every game because even if he's because he's got those questions about his injuries and his fitness overall, but certainly a game like Derby, you want your best 11 out there, which we said it basically picks itself at the moment. Yeah, I can't see how we're going to concede a goal at the moment. And I think a convincing, solid performance for a 2-0 win. Um, we're going to keep rolling on two games after. Yeah, that's what I think. That's right, yeah. Yeah. That we've no, got I'm, power I'm... and we've got the pace and that we uh, we had against them back in October. I remember the game. I was there. It was lovely to be there. But, yeah, it was back. hard to get to evening games all back from where I came from, come up here. But yeah, no, I, I think we, we were convinced against them then. It was very tense inside Portman Road and perhaps towards the end, they we looked a little bit flaky, but I think we're well past that now. Um, the, the form we're in, we're going to be far too much for them, even at a very full Pride Park. So yeah, they're confident for a Ipswich 2 win. I like that, Kira. I like that. And yeah, it was a great night under lights, Portman Road. You know, it was live on Sky. Uh, we're in the blackout kit. Once again, won't get into that. Won't get that's another conversation for another day. But um, that was a, a great evening, you know, winning on Sky and all that. Um, but then when we beat them, Tom, um, they went on an unbelievable run. 15 games unbeaten. But then the last few months have been a bit not great. Um, a few defeats here and there. But um, your thoughts on this one? As you said, you're, you're not you're not worried about them. They're just, yeah, Derby. Yeah, no, yeah. I always feel like we always do quite well against Derby. Um, from what I remember, we always seem to perform, you know, well, we always seem to get results against them. So I've gone for a 1-0 win. Mm-hmm. Uh, likewise to Kieran, I cannot see us conceding. Um, at the moment, we've got the confidence that the back four and Christian Walton have is probably astronomical um, for all all five of them. Um, you know, it's, it's through the roof. Uh, Leif Davis is, you know, in my opinion, our best player uh, this season. You know, he's he's confident. Harry Clark is confident. You know, you've got Burgess and Wolfenden who haven't really put a foot wrong in however many games now. So I can't see us conceding. Broadhead will come back. I reckon he'll he'll get the winning goal. He'll be on a high from being with Wales, as Kieran said. Burns will play brilliantly as well because he's, I think, when he, he stopped being the Burns that we all, you know, fell in love with last season was when he didn't make the Wales World Cup squad. That's when his confidence got hit. He didn't play as well as he had done, but he is fully back now. Um, he's, you know, he's been brilliant the last few games um, I've seen him play. And so I think everything will work out. It might be a little bit of a scrappy goal because, uh, you know, we're due a... I mean, we're not due a rubbish performance as such but we've been brilliant so I can fully see us having a little bit of a a game where we're not you know dominant everywhere um and you know it could be on Saturday um but I still reckon we'll we'll win uh one nil yeah okay then um I've decided boys um, to get rid of the clean sheet record I think we just get it get, get it over with now just get it get, get it done uh, I've gone for a 2-1 town win I've gone for another win for town but let's just get rid of that that record because no it's great um, Walton probably doesn't want to be hearing this Want to probably going shut up Ross I want that record to keep going and going but I think let's just get rid of it now but we don't got to worry about it but um, yeah I think Derby they're, they're a team that 
unbeatable. And uh, Paul Warren, of course, that that little Norwich connection, all that sort of stuff. Um, but now I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a big crowd, as Kieran mentioned. You know, Pride Park's going to be packed out. Uh, you know, away following is going to be great as well. So um, if you are going, enjoy it. If you're not, of course, we'll follow the game with us. Um, but there we go then, boys. Um, any other business from yourself? Um, Kieran, it's been a pleasure to have you on the podcast. Anything else you want to mention going into the game and just in general? Um, no, um, it's been a pleasure to be here. Um, thanks for having me on. Um, no, I, I, I just want to bring up something about away tickets. I just think it's interesting um, as a general observation about availability of away tickets and okay part of it's down to small grounds and small allocations but now we've now got this thing where it's you've got to have a letter to get um away an away ticket now for the remaining parts of the season all four available away games are sold out as it stands the only remaining away game that isn't sold out is Fleetwood and that's because it's not on sale yet um in my entire life supporting Ipswich in the last 20 odd years the only time I can ever remember is having letters for tickets was Norwich away. Um, so I just want to, it just points out um, how, what a stark turnaround there's been in this, that game changer Mark Ashton and the current setup have made to the club, how engaged the fans are. I was talking about 28, 29,000 fans at home every week, which hasn't been a case since, I remember back in the Joe Royal days, really, when it was the average was 26, even that was only 26, 27,000 at home every week. Um, when we were, but back then we were pushing playoffs to the, chat, the Premier League, you know, we, be, you'd be expecting, expecting bigger crowds than that. And I say we'd only ever sell out, we'd sell out away and uh, most of the year. But yeah, we didn't have this priority system of letters only for Norwich away. And I just think for me, as, as a general observation, it's just how fantastic the support is at the moment, but how hard it, it's been worked to get that engagement back to what to make us want to go to these little grounds hundreds and hundreds of miles away on damp Tuesday evenings. Um, for tin pot little grounds and tin pot little clubs in a tin pot little league compared to where honestly I think it should be, which is competing for pre- Premier League promotion. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's a general observation I wanted to make. Fair play. No, fair play. And yeah, if you think about it, you know, maybe even only three years ago, four or five years ago, we couldn't even give the tickets away. But now, anyone, anyone it's like a golden ticket now. If you get a ticket, then happy days, definitely away games. I think people, when they go, they put on Twitter and say, yeah, I've got a ticket. People are jealous and they go, oh, I wish I had a ticket and stuff. And they get snapped up like that, which is great um, to see. And uh, we've got our club back, boys, which is great. Uh, Tom, any other business from yourself? Um, if you don't know this already, ladies and gentlemen, I didn't actually say it in the intro. Uh, yeah, Tom, he's a journalist for the East Anning Day Times, of course, where we're based. Um, you, any any pieces you're working on? Anything you want to give some insight on or anything like that? Any, any other business from yourself? No pieces I'm working I'm actually off now for 10 days. So I'm, I'm loving life. I've inadvertently accidentally booked my holiday to end up with 10 days. Um, so, you know, yeah, don't know how I've done it, but I've managed to do it. So um, I'll take it. So I've literally got no stories that I am working on. My work phone is in my bag. My laptop is switched off. I am not touching either of them until I have to return uh, in April. <laughs> um, yeah, no, nothing else to say. Just um, hopefully we'll be uh, all happy and tweety and smiley come 5.30 on Saturday afternoon slash evening. Definitely, mate. Yeah, looking forward to it. Um, If you are going, as I said, enjoy it. Um, Final little piece of business on the podcast, uh, just to mention the women's team. They've got a massive game as well this weekend um, at home at Felix Stone Walton at AJ Arena against Oxford United in a potential title decider. Um, so if you if you fancy some more football on Sunday, if you can't go to Derby, have a chance to go on Sunday, uh, two pm kickoff, five pounds a ticket um, for adults, um, other tickets. Don't know the pricing, but um, you can find out online. Uh, but yeah, go and support the track the girls. Um, they're hoping to get a really good crowd. Big game against Oxford United um, in the title race. Um, if you haven't already listened to track the girls talk uh, with myself, Blue Wilson, and Kieran Stanley, the media officer, um, chatting about all things it's your town women. Um, but there we go. Um, boys, Kieran, Tom, everybody, thanks for listening. Um, of course, shout out to our sponsors, Manscaped. Uh, use code KOA to get 20% off and free delivery uh, for all your grooming needs. And then Ginger Pickle, big shout out to Tony Southgate, who's been helping me out recently for my In Pictures series. Um, remember, plug for them, Simon Milton, Alex Maffey. They're out there in the wild if you want to watch them. And um, of course, uh, all your marketing needs, use Ginger Pickle. Um, of course, follow us on Kings of Anglia 
on all the socials. Uh, follow Kieran and Tom on all the socials as well if you want to hear about their stories and their lives as well. Um, but there we go. Let's hope for another three points this weekend. Enjoy it. Enjoy the ride. Big nine games. Bye-bye for now.